In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. I will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths.
hey, y'all didn't sound like y'all were praying. <laughs> it sounded like some folks be praying up in here, Lord. I hope your service ain't long. <laughs> Oh, my glory to God in the highest. It is Jesus' birthday. Let's give him a hand clap. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Now, now, you know, to the secular world, you know, the, the, Christmas is, 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 you know, is bad, right? <laughs> because Christmas is it's kind of like your job from a secular sense. You do all the work, and some fat guy in a suit get all the credit. But that ain't our story, right? <laughs> That's not our story this evening. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, was came down from heaven, wrapped himself in flesh for you and I, and that's what Christmas is all about. So we welcome you here to our Christmas Eve service. It's supposed to be a celebration. It's supposed to be a birthday party. Amen? So don't sit here and get quiet on it. Make some noise for Jesus, for he and he alone is worthy. And it's good to see each and every one of you. And uh, this evening, I'm just so elated because I've got my youngest daughter, Alexis. We've been praying for her. Yeah. Amen. And she's slowly coming back. And, and so I, I said, are, are you able to help me out this evening? And she said, yes, yes, daddy. I think I might be able to make it through this thing. Y'all pray for her. If she fall out of here, somebody lay hands on her. <laughs> Well, glory to God. Yes, uh, how you feeling, sweetheart? I'm okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> there. All right. You are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, well, again, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And it wouldn't be a party without a few jokes. You got, you got, you got some jokes for us, some Christmas jokes? Oh, you got Yes. <laughs> Christmas dialogue this evening, amen, because it really is all about 
love Jesus. And, and so we find, in, in, in your bulletin here, we have our Christmas dialogue this evening. And I'm going to read the fine print and ask that you all read the bold print. It says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. May the grace and truth of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please pause me for a word of prayer. Oh God, our Father, we come this evening, Lord, and we come with joy in our hearts because this is the season in which we celebrate the birth of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Oh God, we come this evening and we do come rejoicing because you have given us the most perfect, the most beautiful, the most adorable gift of all, Jesus Christ. And through him, we have eternal life. So God, we come to celebrate this wonderful, amazing thing that you have done. Love came down at Christmas. Oh God, we praise you and we love you and we just want to celebrate now, oh God. So be with us. Let your spirit rest, rule, and abide with us, oh Father, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God in the flesh, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Oh God, you are all that to us and we give you glory, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, and we do say amen, amen, amen. and amen. All right, let's see. So we got a, a, a hymn coming up here. Y'all ready to do some singing? All right. You got some hymn before we sing? Well, first of all, you forgot to tell me to turn my cell on. Oh, look at that, the light of the world. <laughs> Thank you. 
watching their flocks, and the angels of the Lord appeared with this great news that a Savior has been born. Angels, we have heard on high. And now we're going to have our first reading this evening, and it comes from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Bear with me. I might stumble on my words a bit. I bump my head. <laughs> Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 23. The birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Because Joseph was her husband, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. All right, please stand now as we sing hymn number 243, Emmanuel. <laughs> to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. 
He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. Now we invite you to stand for another hymn, hymn number 271, Joy for Joy for We Adore Thee.
know, uh, uh, Christmas carol is really not the music of Christmas. Anybody know the music of Christmas? <laughs> Rap music. Rap. W R A P. Sin brought darkness 
not only over the world, but brought darkness into the heart of mankind. And we see in the Old Testament the story of God wanting a relationship, desiring a relationship with those in whom he had created. But because of sin, <coughs> they could never quite get there. God continued to, to bless, and yet humans continued to disobey. And oftentimes they would be kind of like us, you know, you have those, those stretches, right, where you, you go through those stretches and those seasons where, man, you're just on point and you're doing great, right? And, and I mean, you just feel so good and so close to God and, and everything is clicking. And then we go through those periods where it seems like anything goes, right? We're making bad decisions, bad choices, we're disobeying God. And so there was this ebb and flow of good, bad. God even implemented a sacrificial system to try to atone for the sin of the human race. And that was the slaughtering of animals. The weekly stench of blood being sprinkled on the mercy seat. And it started with God asking the Christian, where are you? Where are you? But then, after 400 years of silence, the New Testament is ushered in. And do you know what the first Christian in the New Testament is? Where is he? Where is he who is born king of the Jews? And I, I, I find that interesting that the Old Testament starts with, where are you? And all of a sudden the, the script is flipped and, and in the New Testament, the first question that is asked is, where is he? This question was asked of those that were seeking the baby that had been prophesied. The baby that had been promised for hundreds and hundreds of years. The one who would save Israel. The one who would restore Jesus Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords. And so I, I leave you with this thought. <clears throat> and the thought is, is God still in the Old Testament, asking you tonight, where are you? Where are you? Are you still hiding from God? Because deep down inside, you are afraid and ashamed. If that is your story, you can change that because tonight you can say, where is he who was born to save the world from their sins? Where is the one who can give me real joy, <coughs> real peace, real hope? Real love. So as we celebrate on tomorrow the birth of Jesus Christ, I hope you know him 
not simply know him as a character in the Bible. Not simply know him as one who did good things and performed miracles. But as one whom you have sought out and received. And in your heart, when the question is asked, where is he? You can respond, he's here in my heart. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, Amen. born as a man, but sits at the Father as the Lord of Lords. Kings of kings. Amen. Do you receive that joy tonight? Yes. Yes. A real joy that you will never find under a tree because he's in your heart. May God bless you and may heaven just smile on you tomorrow as you celebrate our Savior, Jesus the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Now, we've already read the scripture that talks about the fact that the world laid in darkness. And Jesus came. And during his earthly ministry, he said, I am the light of the world. I am the light that pierced the darkness, that pierced the sin that was in humanity's heart. I am the light of the world. But before Christ would leave this earth, he would talk about you and I, and he would say, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So, I say this every year, Jesus transferred his life to us so that we might represent true light in a dark and dying world. And so now we will symbolically reflect that light with our candle lighting and we've got our Advent candle here is really lit. I know it's hard to see, but it's really lit. And for the last four Sundays, we have been lighting each one of these candles. Peace, hope, joy. And on last Sunday, we lit the candle of love. But tonight we have the center candle that is lit as well. This candle symbolizing and representing Jesus Christ, who truly is the light of the world. And so now we will light our lights from his light. And so, voila. <laughs> but I don't want you to light your candles yet, okay? Because Jesus painted this picture. He painted this picture that, you know, when we let our light so shine, that we become contagious. And we become so contagious that we have his spirit in us that lights the hearts of those around us. And so, as the ushers come down, they're going to come and they're going to light their candles from my candle, and then they will go down the aisle and they will light your candle, and then I ask that you turn to your neighbor and set them a fire. Not literally, amen. <laughs> but that you turn to your neighbors <laughs> and set them afire and well. Mm -hmm.
challenges. We reflect on what God really did for us in sending His Son not only to live but to die. Scripture says that he who knew no sin took on our sin so that we may have eternal life.
keep your lights on. Let your light be so shine, amen. Yes, yes. And now we're going to have our prayer. Uh, and again, I'll read the fine prayer and ask that you read the bold prayer. Glory to God in the highest. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Blessed are you, wonderful counselor. You enlighten the hearts with stirred glass love. Blessed are you, Emmanuel. You promise to be with us even to the end of the age. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Blessed are you, Son of God. You dwell among us as the Word in flesh. Reveal yourself to us, the Word, the Sacrament, and may be the very life of all the world. And again, we certainly wish you the merriest of Christmas, and we hope that your day today is a, a day of celebration that you're with family, you're with friends, you're with loved ones. But more than that, that you find yourself with Jesus tomorrow because he is indeed the reason for the season. And so we thank you for coming out this evening for our annual Christmas candlelight service. You can keep the candle if you care to do so. Uh, I got about nine of these. I think this is good number nine. <laughs> Pretty soon I have enough to put in every window. <laughs> Uh, but, you, but if you don't want to, uh, to keep these, amen, you can certainly uh, hand them to the ushers. Also, we've got some uh, treat bags. we got some treat bags as you exit the sanctuary this evening. Some little treats to uh, whet your appetite on your way home tonight. Um, feed them to the kids. They'll be up all night long. Yeah, I'll make sure. Also, uh, for our members, we ask that you, if you can, swing next door. Before you leave, we got our Christmas box over there with some Christmas cards in it. Uh, it'd be nice if you open those up before Christmas. If not, they'll be here on Sunday. <laughs> okay. Amen. Uh, but again, we thank you all. I thank you, Alexis, for being my wingman tonight. You have a joke or two to take us home? Well, first, I wanted to say thank you to the church because, of course, Dad has been telling me that y'all have been praying for me and I've been asking him to pray for my accident. Um, I didn't show my face tonight because Dad said I haven't been here in so long. Y'all thought I was dead. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm right. just let you know. <laughs> okay, well, I do have one more opportunity for y'all to laugh at my jokes, and I need y'all to come through for me because I kind of bet Dad that I would get more laughs than him, and I'm kind of losing right now. So, I need to pick it up. Okay. So, how is the alphabet different on Christmas from every other day? There is no L. <laughs>
had a plan in place by which you will redeem humanity unto yourself. And so this night and every night, God, we celebrate Jesus Christ because he lives in our hearts. And, oh, God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. And we ask now, God, that you will watch over us as we journey from this place. And then, Father, we pray that you will make your face to continue to smile down on us. For, Lord, if you look upon your people, we can't help but be blessed. Oh, until we meet again. And we say, Happy Birthday, Jesus, the Savior of the world. In his name we pray and we say, Amen, Amen, amen and Amen. May God bless you and may you have an amazing Christmas this year.